Okay, here's a screenshot of my uh, car on Tuesday, January 7th, uh, around 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this is on the dashboard of my car. It's uh, showing minus 18 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Um, I don't know if it got colder than that or not. That was uh, a little over a week ago. And I thought we got away from that unscathed, but... Uh, I found out a little bit later that uh, there were some casualties. Uh, I have a koi pond in, in my koi pond in my backyard, and uh, normally I have a pump in there that that circulates the water, so the water won't freeze even even at uh, sub-zero temperatures. Uh, but the the surface of the water will freeze if it gets cold enough, and uh, that's what happened uh, during that cold snap that we had. And uh, I couldn't see what was going on under the the ice, so I had to wait until um, the uh, until it warmed up a little bit and the ice uh, uh, melted away. And um, I went out there, and mm -hmm. this is what I found. Now that the ice has finally cleared up, I can uh, now see into the pond. What I'm seeing doesn't look good. It appears that all of my koi have perished from the cold. All the big guys. A lot of leaves in there too. But, uh, this is not a good day for me. Very sad, very sad. But I'm going to have to get them out of there because they will end up fouling the water for the survivors. I do have a lot of survivors in there. It's the, the comets. Most of the comets are okay. But I'm going to get them out of there. And uh, I guess about the only good thing is after, I don't know, I've had these guys for like 10 years. I'm finally going to get a chance to uh, measure them and see how big they really are got to and you know, probably uh, weigh them too so anyway I'll get to that and, uh, and line them up it looks like uh, we have four casualties I can't see any more in in the water but uh, it's pretty murky in there so looks like we've lost four koi now these uh, patio stones that the fish are, are uh, laying on are 24 inches by 24 inches. So the biggest one up here, you can see it's right from nose just past the edge of the patio stone. So that, that fish was just over 24 inches long. And the rest of them are pretty much the same thing. Uh, now the, the bigger ones here, these are called butterfly koi because of the tail. You can see the long flowing tail compared to uh, the short stubby tail of these, these two down here. So, uh, yeah, after 10 years, i got to say goodbye to these babies. They were, uh, they were 5 inches long when I bought them. Uh, that's including right from the tip of the nose right to the tip of the tail. And I could easily very easily fit the circumference of them yeah you know and close my fingers very very easily now obviously I, I wouldn't even be able to get my hand around one of these things I did I probably wouldn't be able to get both of my hands around them they're that big around it's probably just from the, the top of the uh, spine to the to the belly is probably it's kind of hard to tell with the uh, in the video but Looking at it with my eye, I'd say seven to eight inches from from not the top of the dorsal fin. I'm talking just from the spine to the uh, to the belly, probably about seven or eight inches. So these things got just massive over the years. Such a shame. Okay, well I'm gonna weigh them, and uh, I've uh, been trying to think of what to do with them. Uh, the ground is still frozen, so digging a hole and burying them, it's uh, it would be a little difficult, not to mention, I mean, these guys are so big that uh, I'd probably have to 
dig a, a huge hole. You <laughs> probably need a, a backhoe or something. So, uh, and, and I just, I can't bring myself to, to throwing them in the garbage. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cart them down to the, uh, the river and give them a proper burial at sea. That seems, uh, that seems to me to be about the most fitting uh, resting place for them. So anyway, I'm going to weigh them now. All right, this is the smallest one. And uh, the scale is measured in pounds, so it's 4.3 pounds for this smallest one. I actually figured the biggest one would be about that, that size. So, we'll check out the next one. Okay, and this is uh, number two. This one's a male. This one weighs in at 5.04 pounds. And... Uh, this is sitting on a chair, just to give you another idea of scale. It's one of these uh, Adirondack chairs or Muskoka chairs, whatever you want to call it. So these are big fish, boy. And that's number two. Okay, this is my only female, and the only way I know that is because the uh, the rest of of the koi were chasing her around the the pond uh, last spring. They were they were spawning. She weighs in at 6.89 pounds. Now, I don't know. She's not the longest fish, but she might actually be the heaviest. I'm not sure. We'll find out when I when I put that last male on the scale. Okay, here's the the final victim here, and uh, he is weighing in at 7.615 pounds. So. These are big fish, boy. I am going to miss them a lot. They used to, uh, you know, I'd feed them every day in the summertime, and uh, as soon as I'd walk up towards the pond, they would just come right over to the edge and just wait for me to feed them. And they would actually even let me reach in and pet them if if I wanted to. You know, they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't run away or anything. See, this is the problem with having pets. Uh, you know that sooner or later you have to say goodbye to them, and uh, uh, but you're you're still never ready when it actually happens. Because unfortunately, we we live longer than they do usually. So yeah, it's a very sad day for me. Very very sad. I'm going to miss these guys a lot. <laughs>